So least common multiple of two numbers. The idea of multiple is the first big thing. And then we look for common ones. And then of the common ones, we want the lowest. Now, lowest common multiples in, are in some way a little harder than, than factors. There's, there's always a finite set of factors, but multiples go on forever. So let's pick, uh, start off relatively easy. How about four and six? And the linear model is kind of a nice way to go with this, especially with the color uh, rods, the Q's and A rods, because uh, you can just take the four rod and keep laying them out and lay the six rod next to it until they line up uh, is one way to play around with that. So method number one, we could line up color rods. Bigger numbers, that's not going to be a good way, but starting off with kids, that's a great way to see when they have things in common. And we'll see periodically they will line up. And the first time they line up, that's going to be our, our least common multiple. And we can also do that by just listing multiples. And look for the ones they have in common. And then the first one is the least one. So four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, and so on. And then 6, 12, 18, 24, 30. And they both just keep going. As far as common multiples, first one they have in common was 12 and then 24. And if we looked out again, we'd find 36 would be the next one they have in common. And again, we want the least of the common multiples. So, so listing them out is can be a pretty productive way because it's the first pair that you find that match. So 12 would be the least common multiple. So sometimes it's abbreviated, least common multiple of four and six is 12. Another method is the prime factorizations. So if I look at the prime factorization of four, which is pretty straightforward, is just two squared. And the prime factorization of six, which is just two times three, the way to put these together into a multiple is to basically list the factors without double counting. I'll do a couple of examples of this. So for example, the multiples of four, or sorry, the, the factors of four are two times two, done. As far as six goes, I already have plenty of twos listed, so there's no reason to list anymore. That's that don't double count idea, but there's no threes here yet, so I have to list a three. Now, if I try to get rid of a two, then four would object because it wants two of them. And if I try to get rid of the three, then the six would object. I want a number that's a multiple of both of them. And if you take that strategy of, of listing out their multiples without double counting where they overlap, uh, then you'll find the lowest common multiple. So two times two is four times three is 12, which matches that previous method up there. So let's try this again for another pair of numbers. So earlier we had played with, oops, here we go. Uh, 12 and 16, so let's do that one next. So lowest common multiple of 12 and 16. So there's two ways to do it. There's the list method, that's not too bad. You can use a calculator to generate a list of multiples of 12 and a list of multiples of 16 and find the first place they overlap. So I'm gonna use the, the prime factorization method, method three I mentioned. So 12, we found earlier, was equal to 2 squared times 3. And 16, 
was equal to two to the fourth power. And what I wanna do is to find a multiple, the lowest common multiple, I want to list their prime factors without double counting. So for example, uh, I'm gonna write it out as two times two instead of two squared and then times three. So if something's a multiple of 12, that means it has to have a, a factor of two, a factor of two and a factor of three because that is 12, right? That's the essence of 12. Now 16, it wants a few more twos, right? It wants four of them. I already have two accounted for, so I don't need to include those. So I just need two more twos. And then with that, 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 and that, 16 is now happy. So I didn't double count any factors. So if I list the factors without double counting, I should be good and then just multiply those out. So let's see. Two times two is four, times three is 12. If we double 12, we get 24. Double again, we get 48. So 48 should be the lowest common multiple of, of 12 and 16. And if we list out, then we should be able to double check that's true, that it's gonna be the first multiple they have in common. Let's do this for... 84 and 90. And then there's an interesting relationship that forms. So 84, we factored earlier. Let's look back. 84 was two squared times three times seven. So that's 84 and 90 was two times three squared times seven. And I want to use those to create the lowest common multiple. And it really doesn't matter which one you start with. So I'll do it both ways to justify that. So usually I start with whatever one I wrote first. And if you're gonna be a multiple of 84, you have to have all these factors. You gotta have a two squared, you gotta have a three and you gotta have a seven as a factor because that is 84 right there. Then I focus on 90 and 90 needs a two. Do I have twos? I got plenty, so I don't need to add any more. 90 needs three squared. I only have one three, so I need another multiple of three there for 90. I use a different color there. And then 90 needs a, oops, I lied. 90 does not have a factor of seven. It is a factor of five. And I don't yet have a five, so I need a five. So I wanna list all of the, the factors without double listing some. So I'm just gonna do that again and then we'll multiply that out and see what we get. So this time I'm gonna start from 90's perspective and see what happens. So 90 says it needs two, three squared and a five. And then I think about what 84 needs. 84 needs more than one two. I already have one, so I'm just gonna tack another two on there to get that square. 84 needs a three. I got plenty of threes, no problem. And then 84 needs a seven, I am missing a seven. And what you should notice is the list here above is pretty similar to the list below, but they're just in a different order. If I clean this up, I've got just that two squared there. I've got three times three, so there's a three squared there, and then I have a five, and then I have a seven. So in order as powers. If I do the same thing here, I've got two times two, which is two squared. I've got the three squared there, and then I have a five and a seven. So if I reorganize them, didn't matter which perspective I took, the first number or the second number, I'm gonna get the same list, and then it's a matter of whipping that out on a calculator. And this one is a little more challenging if you're gonna use the other method. <coughs> Excuse me. So new line, we wanna take two raised to the second power and then arrow out of the power times three raised to the second power, arrow out of the power times five 
times seven. And so that product gives me 1,260 ought to be the lowest common multiple of 84 and 90. Oops, there's my whiteboard, there it is. So this comes out, no matter which way I look at it, to be 1,260. Now I could list the factors of 84 and I can list the factors of 90. And what I'll see if I do that is the first pace to line up is 1,260. And I'm gonna skip that. I'll leave it up to you if you wanna test that out later. Spreadsheet would be a good place to do that. So again, my claim is that's the lowest common multiple. Now, here's the interesting thing I wanna point out the relationship between the lowest common multiple of two numbers and the greatest common factor. So the greatest common factor of 12 and 16 was four. The greatest common factor of 84 and 90 was six. And so what I'm going to do is this six right here, I'm going to claim that that six came from uh, this two right here and say that three right there. If that is where the greatest common factor came from, look at the factors I didn't circle here from 84 and 90. I didn't circle two squared, three squared, five or seven. And it turns out those prime factors make up the LCM. Let's check the same thing over here. For the greatest common factor of four, I'm gonna say it's this two squared right there. That's the greatest common factor. The remaining factors from 12 and 16 combined are the two to the fourth power and the three. And notice what I have over here for the LCM, two to the fourth power times three. So here's the interesting relationship between two numbers. Let's call the numbers A and B. So if we take any two numbers, so A could be 16 and B could be 12, A could be 90 and B could be 84, so any two numbers. And then we find their greatest common factor and we find their lowest common multiple. The interesting thing is they share factors in, in, a, in a special way so that if we take the two numbers and multiply them together, that's the same thing as multiplying the greatest common factor by the lowest common multiple. And I think usually finding the greatest common factor is easier than finding the lowest common multiple. So for example, if we take the 84, versus 90 example, it wasn't too hard to figure out the greatest common factor was six. If I know this relationship right here, I know the two numbers and the greatest common factor, then to find the LCM, all I have to do is take the numbers product and divide by six. So 84 times 90 divide by six, right? Bring that six over to the other side as a division, and that should be the LCM. So let's check to see if that gives us the same answer we had earlier. So I claimed it was 1,260. And if I take 84 times 90 and I divide that by six, I get that same number 1260. So that's just a really cool property about greatest common factors, lowest common multiples of two numbers and the prime factorizations are kind of a nice way to see that.